Let's talk about dunk. It's a crucial concept that every person who flies needs to know. How to get out of an aircraft that's crashed and submerged in water. Reference points are points in an aircraft that you can rely on no matter what the situation is to find your way out. Okay, so why is that important? Well, I want you to pretend this elephant is a helicopter. Everything that's heavy on a helicopter is up top. Our main rotor system, our transmission, our engines. As soon as you hit water, the first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna roll upside down. If you lose your references while you're upside down, it becomes incredibly difficult to find your way out. In this video, we're going to discuss the importance of finding your reference points, no matter what, to be able to increase your chances of surviving if you find yourself in such a scenario. So I spent the day with Survival Systems USA in Groton, Connecticut, and they provide this type of training for any and everyone who wants it, basically. Mainly they serve people who are flying in and around oil fields or around water or over water, but anybody can go and anybody can get this training. Class began promptly at 8 a.m. with a video presentation that depicts a Marine CH-46 Sea Knight conducting an assault on a Navy vessel. As the aircraft approaches the ship, the left rear landing gear becomes caught on a barrier fence. The crew attempts to abort the landing by adding power, but the gear becomes stuck and the aircraft rolls and crashes into the water and begins to sink with the Marines inside. Seven of the 18 Marines didn't make it out of this crash. So the Navy recognized a need for a training program that would better prepare sailors to be able to egress an aircraft. And the training program they came up with is now commonly known as Dunker. So the day was broken up into two segments. The entire morning was dedicated to an all academic environment where we learned about Boyle's Law, underwater environments, etc. The second half of the day, we would spend in the pool and would progressively get harder, harder, and harder until at the very end of the day, we were getting dunked underwater, in the dark, blindfolded with no oxygen. So before we entered the shallow water egress trainer or the sweat chair, we needed to be comfortable or familiar with the sensation of breathing upside down without a mask. This was by far the most uncomfortable part of the training. Nothing about this felt natural. We sat at the edge of the pool and dunked ourselves underwater and tried to take a breath from an oxygen bottle. Two things happened here. Number one, you naturally wanted to keep your chin close to your chest when trying to take a breath, but that would actually hinder your airway and make it more difficult to breathe while your sinuses were flooded. The instructors would give you a gentle reminder and push your head back as far as possible before we took our first breath. The second thing that would happen is our sinuses would flood with water. In this video, you can see a student hold her nose as she lowers herself underwater holding her breath. As soon as she releases her nose, water rushes into her nostrils and fills her sinuses. As for me, I really can't explain how difficult it was to have your nostrils and sinuses flood with water, but need to breathe through your mouth. Back here, you've never had that sensation of closing off your sinuses and nostrils, but breathing through your mouth. It is it's very difficult if you've never tried it. It's extremely difficult. Good job, man, good job. All right, just relax, we got you. All right, got any questions on that one? Oh. Awesome, man. Yep, get that oh. head back just like you had it. Blow okay. it out, clear it, breathe. Pull that, come slowly, and exhale. All right, so let's get that video. Can you, uh, I didn't press record. That's okay. Can you we'll do just get again? one. No. <laughs> Look that. We'll do okay. this last one. Yeah. Wow. Just, just three or four more. <laughs> you need to stand up for a second? You good? No. <laughs> Alright, relax your legs, man. He's got it. Yeah. Okay. I got you. I got you. Can we start over? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> oh, you want him to do it again? Okay, I got you. Yeah, you filmed that. We gotta do it again. <laughs> okay. But once I was able to master that, and well, not even master it, once I was able to demonstrate that, it was time to move to the sweat chair to get you used to the sensation of being flipped upside down without the protection of a face mask. Your reference point in this situation is your head. You're rolled upside down. From your head, you're able to find the exit. From the exit, you push out and you come out. One of the most important parts of the training is Boyle's Law. 
right? A gas that's trapped inside something is going to expand as you ascend. So all the air in your lungs, after you take that initial breath from your oxygen bottle, as you ascend, it's going to expand. So you need to exhale the entire time. That was a very important part of the training. The instructors needed to see you exhale no matter what you were doing. I want you to watch this video of me completely messing this up. There's so many things going on. You're trying to get out, you're trying to take a breath, you're trying to find your reference points, you're being rolled upside down. I forgot to breathe. I took my first breath and I held it while my mind shifted to the next task I needed to do to get out. So I came all the way up and as soon as I came up, I realized I didn't take a breath. So I needed to get back in and do it again. Right now, little quiet, it's a little quiet, right? RP coke, right? RP 24, I can make cool 50 can, let's 24 out. Round with the pack, do 10 C mounts. Feed me and salt, and elite three rounds. I'm thumb through it, I don't need no counter. Had to recess, take the bit, my neck on my John. I got oil, I got him, I got wax, I got flour. Burn on pre roll, free go Pluto. Drip real hard when I hop in that Tudo. I just made a second, that's a plug named Hugo. Got a lot of talks in my motherfucking kind of white collar, got a nigga bond like Lonzo. D nigga over it, like Joe Flacco. Let's go back to the Marine video for a second. I want you to picture everything we've talked about to this point. And I want you to realize that all the Marines that were in that CH-46 were standing up. So they were standing up, getting ready to conduct an assault, a training assault on this ship. So when they hit the water, everybody scattered all over the aircraft. People had broken bones, broken backs, and they had no references because they were one minute they were standing up, the next minute they were thrown all about the aircraft. These training scenarios have been adjusted by the Navy to keep everybody seated and buckled in all the way through the landing. That way, in the event that something does happen, everybody has a reference point. If you roll over and you're upside down, you're still in the same exact spot that you were prior to. And you know that to your left is an exit, to your right is an exit. For example, in the aircraft I fly, the UH-60, I know that right next to my left knee, about three to five inches, if I'm on the left side of the aircraft, is a jettison handle. So if I ever am in a situation where I'm upside down in the water and I need to get out, my reference point is my left knee. Touch my left knee, push out three to five inches, I'm gonna find a handle, I'm gonna pull that handle and my door's gonna jettison. One clear, two clear, students clear. The first dunk was essentially with the training wheels on. I had oxygen, the lights were on, and I could exit it out my door. Very easy. Everything that I was learning throughout the day was now becoming muscle memory. It's pretty much second nature. Now it was time to do a cross cabin exit, right? I needed to try my door and it wasn't gonna work and I needed to egress out the other door on the other side of the aircraft. But I needed to keep the same reference point. So while I was flipped upside down, I needed to stay upside down as I moved across the entire cockpit of the aircraft. I want you to take a look at how disorienting the inside of the trainer can be. Seat belts are going in all sorts of directions. My bubbles are going down to my feet. The natural tendency is to right yourself while inside the trainer. But if you do that, now everything around you is in the opposite place. Either the opposite side of the aircraft, the handles were high or now low. It's completely debilitating. The key here is to stay inverted and stay upside down with the aircraft. As you move about inside the aircraft, you find things, hold on to things to keep you oriented 
so you know exactly where things are. Once you're outside the aircraft, you're able to find the surface. If you forget everything I've said in this video, I want you to remember one thing, and that's a reference point. If you locate a reference point, you've already significantly increased your chances of survival if something were to happen. What you can't do is panic. And I know, easier said than done. But if you panic, you lose your reference point and you lose your exit. Stay grounded, think your way through, find your exit, and if you do that, you'll find your way out. Thank you to the sponsors of this video, Survival Systems USA in Groton, Connecticut. If you guys are interested in this type of training, um, they provide this training to anybody. You don't have to be military, don't have to have uh, a job sponsor you. You can go and you can take this type of training for yourself or you bring your friends and family or whoever. It's a lot of fun, you learn a lot, and if you guys are interested in seeing me do some more of this type of stuff, comment, let me know. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe. See you.